years. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Looking at the Dow up 150 at 34,217. Uh, this time I've got my uh, trade station charts and I can show you on the daily chart on the left, we're in a leg scene. The Chapman Wave methodology, especially if you break above a previous key high, that was a high of 34,257 in the Dow on the 1st of May, you are confirmed in a buy mode, and the buy mode says that you should almost always go to at least a leg D and then a peak D uh, before other things can happen. And they don't have to happen, but that's where you get the yellow light goes on and we start to become much more cautious now. Of course, for subscribers to opening call, we've been long for a while. We've added, actually, we've been long from the October low. We've we had trading positions on the uh, short, three times short and three times long Dow, as well as the Dow itself, as well as having a core position there. And our trading position now is up, uh, of course, very nicely. We've been in it over a week, about a week, uh, over a week, I think. And um, now we've got to be a little bit careful. Yes, leg C should pull back, then make a peak C, and then the leg D. But wait a minute. You finally got your leg D in the monthly, in the weekly chart, and that weekly chart had a high that was on the 16th, the weekly chart, 16th of December, went to 34,712. Since then, it plummeted to, to the low that was made back in October, uh, actually, the, sorry, the, of March, and that was the March low of 31,429. So this is really important because within the context of this low that was made at 28,660 October, the week of the, October the 14th, that's where every higher peak it gets counted. You alphabetize it. So you went to peak A, B, B, B pull back, another A, B underneath that, pull back, and then it went a little A right here on this candle, the high candle of the 10th of uh, March. That was A, then B was a s slightly higher high. Oh, wait a minute, let me just double check. 34082, 34018, yeah. So that was peak B, and then peak C was right here. On the, fifth, the week of the 5th of May, pulls back, goes to D. Now, this D is under that previous high, so we've got to be real careful. In the meantime, everything looks good uh, in terms of the price. The MACD is only slightly positive, and the stochastic at 76.07 is still under 80%. And the on-balance volume is lagging, so there hasn't been a confirmation other than price of the nine-period moving average over the 14, but that's good enough for now. So let's go to the S&P. We'll do this as well, if I can, with my one hand, SPX. X, there we are. Now, I've got this as an alternate count, G slash C, which would correspond to the Dow being in leg C, if that's the case. That means we should get some kind of a pullback. And this is fascinating. Why? Because if we've got a leg C today with a higher high than yesterday, both in the Dow and, let's say, the S&P, it means that whatever the Fed does tomorrow there should still be, technically, it doesn't have to be, but technically there should still be higher highs. So maybe the market gets a little nervous tomorrow, pulls back, and then Friday says, ah, oh, things are okay, and then we've got to make a decision over the weekend if we're in leg D. So I just, it sounds, for those of you who use Chapman Wave methodology, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Otherwise, maybe the you're just hazing over and saying, oh, man, D, C, I want to... All I'm saying to you is it's still very positive. What is negative is that, look, in this daily chart, the on-balance volume is very overbought, but the stochastic is flat at 93%. And I always say a flat stochastic in the 90% area is very positive. Every textbook says over 80% is overbought. The, the, even the term overbought implies that it should now come back and be over, come back to be oversold or something like that. No. It is very positive. That's all you can say. The weekly chart is 97.06. That's 
that is extremely positive. But that on balance volume is, in fact, um, overbought. That is the only indicator I use is overbought. And if you're looking at the... Um, if you're looking at the monthly chart, this is a very strong leg C. Wait a minute. We're talking about a, a lot of people are talking about a major bear market. A major bear market, you've got the semiconductor index going to 154.35 today. 159.42 was the November 2021 high. We've made a, almost a V-shaped recovery. No, it's not the same in, in price left side to the right side. But I can tell you this. It's very close. We, we are bar, one bar late in getting to the 159.42 level. But at 151, that is fabulous action in the semiconductor area. Now, let's go back to our charts we want to look at. And I'm just going to ask Al to please cue me in for the, uh, when I hear the music, if I hear the music. Uh, we're looking at the QQQ. Up seven cents now, at 360.68. See, it's pulled back a little bit. Uh, MACD is good. Stochastic is good at 88%. On balance volumes a tad overbought. Nine is way over the 14. Nine period moving average. And that, that's a good sign. And we've got leg G slash C in the monthly, ch in the weekly chart. And that is going towards the left side, right side price time match, which has another couple of weeks to go to try to get to the left side high of 371.83, made back in April of last year. So this is also very good action. Look at that weekly chart. Um, just walk in the nine period moving average. I want to do the IWM, the Russell 2000. Russell 2000 is trading right now up strongly, up 2.51 at 188.32. Now, I've got this as a leg F, but it's got an instant restart, so there could be an F, uh, F slash B. So far, it's going to have to be really bad news that really tanks this market. And the weekly chart's just okay, and the monthly chart's just okay, but that daily is really moving along nicely. Let's just do this quickly. Uh, G slash C. Uh, this is the, uh, sorry, this is the gold index. Uh, gold is down five at one, 1964. Just stuck in this range, making a kind of an arch formation. Must hold 1950 uh, key support. My, the weekly chart says, yeah, by this end of this week, we might be going into a sell signal in the weekly chart of the Dow. And the monthly chart is just kind of ho hum. This to silver, and once again, I need to be told. Uh, when the break is over, as we're doing this remotely. Oh, I think I missed something here. This is silver. Silver, uh, no, I think I'm right. Silver on the uh, 29th of May had a low, had a high of 23.51, and the next day was exactly the same. Okay, so parallel highs, that just counts as a continuation pattern. So that's peak A, and we've made a peak B. Silver's acting, chart-wise, it's a little bit better then gold. Now remember, silver is also used in the uh, batteries, or at least in the technology for the batteries. Um, and that, that now, as it used to be gold, uh, silver was used in uh, photography years ago, decades ago. So now it's being used. That's good. So we've got a break coming up. Basil Chapman, I'll be right back looking at the Dow INDU as we go after the break. The Dow is up 118. Be right back. Tiger Technicians Hour. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here, Tiger Technicians Hour on this Tuesday, the 13th of June. We're looking at the CCJ, which is Chemical Core, and we're, it is trading right now. 57 I had a question if I could just show the chart. 32.52 uh, right now. This is leg C. So many of these indices and stocks have this potential for a C and then a pullback and then a D and then we have to assess. And next week is going to be the week to assess everything. So far, look, the technicals here are extremely good. On balance volume is overboard. It says it should have a pullback. Just a pullback. That means it could become a peak C, then go to a D. But look at the weekly chart. Look at the beautiful symmetry between the left side cup and the right side cup like a like a W formation, rising W formation. And look at the way it's walked, the 14 and 9 period moving averages in the monthly chart. They're really good. So this is acting extremely well. And finally, uh, in this month of June, the, the uh, MACD is cross positive. Stochastic still lagging at 64%. So this on price is extremely good. So let's go. I want you to finish up uh, the uh, areas of the commodities, high-grade copper, is made a very quick peak B, peak C, and one bar S, peak D, one bar S, and today's leg E. So usually when that happens, you get a bit of a pullback. Not a major sell or anything like that, but the speed with which it goes from C to D to E says, okay, you've got to be a little bit careful. So that's copper, but it's acting extremely well on the daily chart. The weekly chart is still, that leaves a lot to be desired. Looking at the dollar again, let me just do this dollar uh, DXY. We've got that. There it is. Uh, pulling back, I'm, 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 it's actually gone to a sell signal right now on the daily chart. The, the weekly chart has all been in this lowercase. H that goes to a low case M pattern. Remember when everyone's saying uh, dollars should be breaking out to the upside. My work said, well, if, if it follows the pattern that is being seen in, in crude oil and many of the other areas of chart formations, this lowercase h should go, because it held the left side low, should in fact make another arch formation, which go to a lowercase m. So the dollar doesn't have to break down. It just it, it's really not leading at this particular point. If you look at the USD JPY, and they usually go in the same direction, the dollar and the yen, uh, that's the direction. That doesn't mean to say they follow the same percentage. Look, this is a way better chart 
made a big uh, uh, rally, and now it's making this cut formation. Can it have one spike to go to maybe a peak C1, C2, or even a D? Well, the weekly chart says it's holding very steady, and that's that's what I've been talking about for quite some time. Um, the, the correlation that we've had between uh, the uh, yields coming down, the market going up, or gold coming down and, and dollar goes up, uh, the VIX comes down, the market soars to the upside. That's not really been the case for quite some time now. And in this particular instance, it, you can see it with the dollar and the yen. They both have a trajectory, um, just a shorter term. But in fact, if you look at the weekly chart, here's the dollar. Um, so here's the, the uh, U.S. dollar, Japanese yen. The yen going to a peak A and then a peak B in the weekly chart. Very nice upside action. And look, I'll just do this one more time. Look at the dollar. Uh, can I get that? Yes. Look at the dollar. It's the exact opposite. Um, and that's very unusual because it's usually the euro that has the exact opposite to the uh, to the dollar. Look, here's the euro. Peak A, peak B, I think. Let me just check. Uh, 1.0787, 1.0787. No, so this is a leg B right now that we're looking at. But look at that monthly chart having a high level consolidation, not breaking out. Look at the week, uh, month, the weekly chart that was. Look at the weekly chart uh, making the sideways almost like a rectangle, and you can see it better in the monthly chart. So that's the euro, which is up just a fraction right now. I wanted to go to the TLT, and TLT is pulling back. But there again, that's the pattern I talk about, spoke about in the in the dollar. Look, lowercase h goes to a lowercase m, sideways rectangle formation. If the TLT, which is the ICS 20-year Treasury bond ETF, actually breaks 100 and starts to test the 99 to 98 area, then I'm going to be looking at the yields and saying, uh-oh, yields. Let me just go to the TBT. We'll see it. Uh, yeah, it's the opposite. So the TBT is going to D, E, and F. Let me just do this. I'll type it in here. So in the chat wave, you find the lowest low, and you count each success of the higher peak. It's about as simple as that. My objective is to go sequentially, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But a D, other things can happen. You can get a recycle. You can get a whole bunch of things. So here is the um, TBT, which is the ultra-short Lehman 20-year Treasury bond ETF. Um, I need to put a down arrow but the the nine period moving average hasn't turned negative, and the price hasn't closed. Well, it has closed as before below the um, fourteen black fourteen period moving average here. But look at the price has been sideways, and look at the weekly chart. So I think yields are just stuck in a range. What am I missing here? I did the card, did that, the copper, did that, did that, did that. Okay. So a couple of things I had questions about, and I I want to follow the follow up on them right now. So could I do Apple? Okay, Apple. And I'm not sure if you wanted the Apple uh, on a daily or intraday or whatever it was, but Apple made a peak after the Chapman methodology. That could have been an alternate count, but basically what I do when I see something like this is I draw in the rectangle and I say, okay, you've got your outer limits. Let's see how it deals with these outer limits, and we will look at NVIDIA in a moment talking about outer limits. But look at this. Apple made 184.95 high about uh, seven sessions ago. The weekly chart made an almost doji-type candle and is saying, and I'm going to draw that in right here, at this particular moment, the, and I, let me just finish drawing this. Here we go. Okay, and then I want to do the, the monthly chart to show you this is the, the weekly I'm doing right now. There it is. Click on the right thing. There we go. And you can see, 182.94 was the all-time high back in January of 2022. Here we are a month and a quarter later, a month, almost a month and a, a year and a half later. And what do we do? We've got this beautiful cup formation, and we've seen it so many times over the last year that there are prices that go as lows and highs to exact within pennies, even if it's a hundred, even if it's a three hundred dollar stock or index, and it goes right to within pennies and then has a bit of a reversal. So is Apple telling us that we're getting really close to some kind of a digestive phase where maybe the 184 to 180 
Oh, it didn't make a new high. Yes, 184 to 182 area is strong resistance, and we start to pull back, just digest a little bit in this rectangle formation in the weekly. But wait a minute. The daily chart technicals are starting to weaken, but that 9 is still way over the 14. To get that negative, to get a sell mode, not just a sell signal, you'd have to break this uptrend channel line right here, this inside track repellent, propellant line right there that means you'd have to close under 174 10 points lower to actually start to get that nine period moving average turning negative in the daily the weekly chart everything's good on balance one's very overbought look at the flat stochastic and 95 percent that is really good and the weekly chart monthly chart has just seen the uh, the magd cross positive basil chap and tiger technicians hour we'll be right back and i'll just give you the price of the dow as we're looking at it now the Dow is trading at 100, up 102 at 34,117. It made a new recovery high. I'll be back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019. Finishing at number two for the year, an amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFA. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. So this is what I wanted to show you. And this is uh, if you look at the market in um, if you look at the market in a way that says what's working, what's not working. Therefore, what is the market telling us? PAVE, which is a Global X U.S. Infrastructure and Development ETF, trading uh, today right now at the high of 30.16, up 54 cents in leg C. 
in a new buy mode in the uh, daily chart has 30.30 as its all-time high back in the week of March the 3rd, 2023. Um, and that was above the 29.45 high of January. So you tell me, if this is working so well in terms of the, the deep, the infrastructure, the deep part of the economy, um, and that's the super tanker. That doesn't just change on a dime. It takes a long time to heal and repair any damage. And you've got a caterpillar, which is, must be part of that, uh, acting well. Look at this caterpillar up today, up $8 at 245 of 3.36%. I've got this as a leg E in the daily chart, but it could have recycled. It doesn't matter. Everything here is positive. Uh, the weekly chart has a long way to go to get back into the 260s where the last high was. And it made a PD in the, um, this is kind of the heavy duty uh, equipment, CAT is a symbol. And look at this monthly chart. He has a Chapman falling axe and broke out, went back in, and now it's acting very well. Even if you put deer, which is actually more agriculture, uh, Diaz, look at the action in Diaz. It's still early in its move to the upside, it looks like. Peak A, peak B, leg C. Oh, so many, <laughs> so many charts in leg C. Look at the Chapman falling axe formation in the weekly chart. So Diaz acting well. If you look at the agriculture, DBA, I should just mention we are long DBA for a long, long time from the 13s. It's trading at 2131 right now. Um, that means that the the grains are starting to move back up after a very sharp move down. Look at this wheat. That's wheat. Uh, trading nicely. It's, it's in, a, in a buy signal at this particular point. It hasn't confirmed the buy mode. Weekly looks terrible. Monthly looks terrible. But the daily is improving. It has um, probably, it needs to get to the 666 area, 680 area to say, hey, I'm now in a buy mode in the daily chart. Soybean, this is a soybean continuous contract, is making, this is still a leg, B, a leg A in the daily chart. Weekly looks a beautiful arch formation, retest of the left side low. Weekly chart made that H pattern, test of the monthly chart that is, test of the left side low. So this is very good action going to the 200 period moving average of 14.11 and it's trading right now at 13.98. So I'm liking what I see in the rotation. And remember, I, I consider rotation to be, if you're looking at the market, if you aren't considering rotation as being important, then I think you're missing out on sectorization. And that sectorization says, if you pick the, the right sector, if it's in a bull phase, or if you're a bear and it's in a bear phase, that tide can keep you in the trade a lot longer than you anticipate, anticipated initially, because all the momentum goes that way. In this particular instance, corn, legs, C to the upside, very strong technicals. Uh, I, I like what I'm seeing. So what I was saying is that the DBA is telling us that, yeah, the agriculture, DBA agricultural funds, doing very nicely. 2301 was the May high. Um, it was a major high. And then it pulled back sharply into the 19 area, and here it is at 21. It's not a big deal, two points. But in this particular instance, it is a big deal because it's, it's a trend of a particular sector. That makes That's why deer, I like the, I like the action very much in deer. A, a question came up about, oh, where was it? Okay, so I wanted to go back to this. So we said Apple. Uh, Apple is pulling back from the intraday high. We're looking at Amazon. Amazon is trading right now, and I want to look at NVIDIA. I mustn't forget. So NVIDIA made a new recovery high. I'm calling this a G at this particular point, a G slash C, because it could have an alternate count. That's why you always have to be that's after your, your initial D. That's where other things can happen, and that's the case here. But look at the weekly chart. Leg C looking very good. Amazon holding very nicely. Makes the at 126 right now, even though it's down 44 cents. It makes the whole area of 117 to 115 really important support. It is a major, major turnaround. NVIDIA. NVIDIA is the... Oh, I typed it in the wrong place. Let me type it over there when you're working with one hand, because uh, the other hand's holding your cell phone because I couldn't Skype in correctly. Uh, yeah, we got NVIDIA up a six, a $5.12 at 399 
all within that rectangle. Remember, I drew the rectangle. I said these outer limits are what we're going to be looking at for some time, 419 on the upside, uh, 366, I think it was. Let me just double check. Three, yep, 366 on the downside. There it is in the middle. Well, it's just a little above the middle four, at 400. Look at that weekly chart. A little sign in doji candle from last week says, okay, if at any point, and I suspect it's going to happen in the next, I'd say in June, if there is a close any day below, uh, let's go to the 366.35 there. Let's call it under 365. That says NVIDIA is finally after that spectacular announcement and all the everything that was working for it. It's just having a big digestive phase. Well, I don't know about big, but a digestive phase. Look at that huge uh, 290s to the 360s gap. That is an amazing gap. Um, and uh, it, it went to an all-time high. It's just off the all-time high. Next thing I, I was asked about, could I look at um, the PPA? PPA is the, oh, I didn't update it, Invesco Aerospace and Defense uh, Portfolio. So this has gone from here. You identify the lowest low bar and then count each successively higher peak. I believe it's in leg D. So you can tell when I'm doing all this stuff, everything that's worked up until this very moment, has to be analyzed in the next three to five sessions, I'd say even three, yeah, three to five sessions, to see whether or not the continuation pattern, since this is a rectangle and we're retesting the previous high in the Invesco Aerospace and Defense ETF, uh, right now we're looking at it at a high, 82.71 82.71 high of the day, 80, oh, just off the high of the day. Well, the previous high, I didn't type this in, was back in, right there, back in March, the week of March the 10th of this year, 82.61. You see what I'm saying about how so many key areas are testing almost to the penny where they were months ago. And that's so often that we've seen in the last I'd say eight months to 10 months. How many, actually it's more than a year. Eh? How many times prices have gone to within pennies of the previous high and then pulled back again, then gone to the low, hit the low. We've seen that. We saw that even the TLT, the TLT went to the 99 area and retested it. Um, so you even saw that in the dollar. Uh, so we're, we're, we're looking at this very closely. Another question came in. Oh, Netflix, NFLX. Netflix, uh, a new recovery high, leg F, could be an instant reset, oh my goodness, in the daily leg D in the weekly, everything looks excellent here, I'll be back in a moment, Uh, Basil Chapman, Tiger Traditions Hour, we'll go into the next break and I will check uh, to see, I, I can't see YouTube, but I will see in the den if there were any questions coming up, I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today 
and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So we're looking at the XLF, which is the S&P Select Financial Spider uh, Fund. Very nice off the 31 area uh, back in early May, trading at 33.42, two points. Doesn't sound like much, but it, it means that the weekly chart, we can look at it and say at least at this point, as we're speaking at 10.42 a.m. Eastern Time on the 13th of June, uh, we are starting to make higher highs and higher lows. That's what I wanted to see for quite some time because I think it's absolutely imperative uh, that you have the, oh, I've got to double check that, that you have the financials moving up. If they start to stall, the IAA stalled a little bit and then it started up strong again, 33, 43, 33, 53. Yeah, this is 33. Today's high is... 3348. Oh, we haven't made a leg B yet, but it's good that we are trying to make higher highs and higher lows in this particular instance. The regional banks uh, uh, moving up not quite as sharply today. It's up 74 cents at 4389. Uh, it hit the left side target uh, that we had in price uh, symmetry. 4459 has been the target. It's gotten to 4498. That's a really good action. I, I want to see this almost lead uh, the uh, in the banking sector because this is the regionals. You want the regionals to be doing very nicely. So uh, I spoken yesterday about Hack, which is the iShares. So it's a prime uh, cyber security ETFs on security stocks, making a new recovery high today, up forty eight cents at fifty point eighteen. H A C K Hack is the symbol. Now I've got this. You see how many times we've got a potential instant restart where after a PD within three bars there's a higher high and that gives you an E, but it could be an alternate count. So that's why I'm saying this is such. I'd rather not presuppose something. I'd rather let the market tell us because if the Fed actually says. Uh, we're going to halt, we're going to stall, we're going to whatever they say, how the market perceives the um, the statement is going to be absolutely imperative to monitor because it's not what they say, it's how the market responds. And as far as I'm concerned, um, it's the response that says we might continue in this in this move up. I'm looking at so many aspects that say on a very short term basis. Becoming quite quite over um, overbought just on my on balance volume. That's the only thing. But the nine is almost all of them that I've shown you here. Look at the daily chart here of Hack. The nine is way over the fourteen. The MACD is deflected up in, the, in this um, M-shaped pattern. It's higher. Stochastics over eighty percent at eighty two. Not great, but it's good. Um, in this instance, because it had been much higher before, on balance volume had that retracement. Now it's trying to rally. Uh, the weekly chart that has this cup formation, and it's not only that; it's a rectangle formation. Now I can expand the rectangle formation because that's the lopsided cup, the gravy cup that I call, and that just says if you're making higher highs and higher lows, 
and you've got this rectangle formation with a lopsided sharp move down, and then you're making the steady move to the up to make that ellipse on the right, the quaro, that's the semicircle on the right, uh, like a boat, that's the keel, the other side of the keel, then you should get very close to right on or just above the previous high. This is the high in hack, which is at 50.28, the week of the 26th of August, and then you've got to be careful. And here it is at 50.18, very, very close. So in every perspective that I'm looking at the market right now, the Fed, I from what from what we can perceive as the market's anticipated response to something that hasn't happened yet, um, sometimes you get to sell the news. You know, you get an anticipation of news, you get your rally, you get yourself, and then you get your exact reversal on the news itself. So I'm watching this, and we're ready um, to do whatever it takes. A couple of things I want to look at here, and I am going to go to it right now. So within the context of all these different sectors, uh, we looked at Apple, we looked at Amazon, we looked at Netflix, we looked at uh, NVIDIA, Goog, and I look at Goog, uh, uh, it's not the trading stock, it's Goog, the Alphabet Inc. C stocks, search engine, made a peak D just recently, uh, five sessions ago, at 100 and... 29.53, didn't, didn't get to a round number, 129.53. Well, it pulled back, but it hasn't really participated sharply in the rally the last three days, four days. That says to me, it could start to stall here, and that gives you the 118 to 115. I know people have asked me, at what point would you think of stocks like a Google, uh, like an Amazon, that, that have read Apple, that have had fabulous moves? Where would you start to look at getting in? I'd say have patience. If you miss it, you miss it. But at this particular point, Google looks like it needs to rest a little bit. And let's see, if it starts to trade under 120, it's at 124.63 right now. Any time in the next week, going into next next the full week next week, uh, that's when we want to start looking at it. Question came up about BSX. BSX. BSX is Boston Scientific. <clears throat> there it is, Boston Scientific. Oh, that's the same pattern in miniature. Uh, uh, sorry, the Google is in miniature. This is a bigger one. Made a peak D, then a sharp pullback from the 54s down to the 50 area, bounced up to 52, just under 52, and now it's gone sideways. And you can see in the weekly, and this just suggests that some of the leadership that we've seen, and that could include the PPA, that's the the, uh, the aerospace area, um, that could include that area that takes a bit of a breather here. And that means that we've got to be looking very closely at um, the, the sectors that, I wonder if what CC is doing. That is uh, Chamois. Chamois company uh, trading up 82 cents. Yeah, a big spike, and now it's pulling back. That's in um, materials, Teflon, fluoropolymers, etc. So yeah, you've got a very. It's a variegated scene. You've got sectors within sectors that are have participated and now resting or haven't participated. One other sector I want to oh, I haven't looked at this for a long time. WTR, I haven't I probably haven't even got it notated. W A T is that water? Uh no. Uh, yeah, water's company. So this is also in the uh, construction area, I believe. Uh is it water's I don't know if it is worse, but I remember I'd follow this. Yeah, this is not, now it's having a bit of a rally. Uh, it's up $7 at 264 and it, it had this huge negative arch formation. So we've got to look at what could work, and, and that's, that was when I did the webinar about a month ago. I said, this is, we've got to look at what's working now and what could work in the next part of the summer, and that's this part coming up now. So do we get this pullback? Um, in the, uh, let me just once more go to the SMHs to show you what I'm looking at. So it's bounced back. It, it made a, an intraday high of 154.35, then it pulled back to the 151s. Now it's at 152.95. And that's the other thing that we've seen this week that stocks, even the indices, look, even when you think you've finally got yourself a decent top, what happens is it pulls back. 
makes a cup formation and tries to go right back to that previous level. I'll be back in a moment. Let's do the e minis up 24. I'll no take this when we get back. We'll talk about it from the last segment. Basil Chapman, Tiger the Ignition Hour. Be right back. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, fuel cell, fuel cell, uh, FCEL is a symbol at 271, up 11 cents. Uh, yeah, leg D, we were talking about this the other day with Dan in the Den. Uh, it made that peak C and pull back, and then we were expecting that it would go to a D and would be above the high of the 8th of May, which is at 261, and it did that. Um, now what you've got is the, the stochastic's still weak at 71%. MACD is good. Nine period moving average is over the 14. All, all the other technicals are good. The unbalanced volume is just a tad overboard, so you get a bit of a pullback here. But now this... Uh, Chapman Wave inside wedge target repellent line becomes a support, and that is on the very short term, 
two fifty. Let me just get that right. Yeah, and, and the two fifty should be a key support. So that that's what we're looking at. So let me just sum up real quickly what I'm looking at, and I have to do that because I think if I got the internet still, God, these remote things are hazardous to your health and hopefully not to the wealth. So we're looking at the Dow. And this is what I'm looking at in terms of the next few days. Somehow or other, <clears throat> we should still get to a leg D. That's a higher high. We're in leg C. Looking at the S&P, it's the same thing for almost all the indices. So there could be a pullback tomorrow, but somehow or other, we should squeak higher, and then we might have a digestive week coming up next week kind of what I'm anticipating. We still remain long in all our positions. No shorts just yet. Have a wonderful rest of the day. And uh, Basil Chapman signing off. Thank you for